Today we're back on the Miata project. We're gonna focus on replacing the fender mounting bolts along with the strut tower bolts and the hood hardware. The stuff on the car is pretty rusty so we just wanna get rid of that, that rust. We've also got a complete energy hub, quick release and steering wheel with a horn button. So we're gonna replace the stock steering wheel and update to a removable smaller diameter steering wheel. We also have a set of LED headlights that are gonna replace just the stock old halogen bulbs. You can see over here, we've got a set of LED headlights. Um, we've got the energy hardware with the hub. It's a short hub. You can see in the description link, we'll put all the part numbers in, in there. And then we've got a Neochrome quick release mounted to just a basic aftermarket wheel with a energy horn button. Then we've got a basic set of fender mounting bolts and then some replacement hardware for the hood and strut tower brace. So this was kind of the first cheap Wish order that we tried out. The headlights actually came from Wish too. So we'll try them out if they work, great. If they don't, then we'll swap them out to a, an updated H4 halogen. These got sprayed with penetrating fluid uh, a couple weeks ago. Just because of the state of those nuts, we are concerned with the hardware breaking off inside the hood when we went to unbolt it. Uh, luckily, these came apart quite nicely. Old? New. Yeah. The hood on this car is actually aluminum. So there's a plate inside the hood that just holds the head of these steel bolts in. And so if this head snapped off, it would have meant pulling the hood off, extracting the broken stud out of the hood, and then either installing like a rib nut or uh, a new plate hardware to hold whatever stud or, or hardware that we could get in there to bolt this to the, the hinge. Um, luckily for us, we're able to just update the hardware to get rid of some of that rust and uh, we can deal with whatever last bit of rust that's on there if and when the car gets painted or if the hood gets replaced in the future. So a fender bolt is what holds the sheet metal to the chassis of the car yeah. um, and ours are pretty rusty. The worst one is this one inside the door that every time I open the driver's door all I see is this really ugly rusted bolt. Okay, so we got the fender bolts installed on the fenders, but we broke on both sides the bolt that mounts the fender to the B pillar. The problem with this location as opposed to those bolts there is that the threads of the bolt extend into an enclosed cavity. So there's no way to access what's behind the head of the bolt, whereas on these fender bolts inside the engine bay. The threads are actually exposed underneath here. So you can actually see what's extending through the mounting hardware there. I'll show you guys the process that I go through of trying to extract a bolt. You definitely need a center punch. I use an automatic one. You need a extractor set, then a set of assorted easy outs. I have a set of cobalt 
drill bits and I have a set of titanium drill bits. So you're drilling through generally fairly hard metal, whether that's a grade eight or a grade 10 bolt. Uh, if you're drilling through a strong bolt, you need a strong drill bit. The worst thing that you can do possible when you're trying to extract a broken bolt is break a tool off inside that bolt because drill bits or easy outs are made of hardened steel. If you break this off inside the hole that you've drilled, you will never get either of them out. You cannot drill into a hardened easy out. Therefore, you can't extract a broken easy out. So it turns into a lot bigger of a job. First of all, you need to get a center punch mark dead center into the broken piece of bolt. So what you want to do is drill out the center of the broken bolt that's left in the hole. So what I'm gonna do is make a center punch mark as close to dead center on this broken bolt as possible. With an automatic center punch, let it go a few times. So now you can see that in this broken bolt, in the middle, I've got a center punch mark that the drill bit can follow. Then you wanna drill a pilot hole. A professional cutting fluid will help keep your drill bits sharp and stop them from dulling out so you don't just destroy a drill bit on one broken bolt. Try to keep the angle of the head of your drill in line with the straight angle that that bolt was installed in. So if you drill way over here, you're just gonna drill through the side of the bolt. What you wanna try to do is drill through the length of the bolt so that your drill bit just comes out the other end. So, <laughs> just snap the drill bit off inside there. The worst thing that you can do possible is break a tool off inside that bolt. I was either pushing too hard, drilling too fast, or the angle that I got was just wrong. Grab yourself a pair of vice grips. If you are able to grab the piece of the bit and rotate it counterclockwise. Holy, this is brittle. So we have some issues here. I'm gonna grab a pair of uh, side cutters. I can already tell this isn't really going to work. My last resort is two flathead screwdrivers. So you just kind of wedge the tip on either side of the broken bolt and try to pry it out. We are in luck. So I was able to pull it out about a half an inch. We'll just work the rest of it out. So for some reason, this drill bit decided to essentially shatter into three pieces. Hmm. So now we can just increasingly step up the size of the drill bit until either we can get a easy out or an extractor in the hole to try to pull the broken bolt out. Or if it's too rusted in there, then what we'll have to do is just step up the size of the bolt big enough until we can thread in a tap the same thread pitch. If you think of it as the bolt that broke off in there, you're left with just this in the hole, right? So you have a portion of threads that are stuck in the hole. We've drilled down dead center of that bolt and we've just stepped up the drill bit size until you've drilled the thickness of what this bolt is. When I ran the drill bit through there, it almost looked like it took out what was left of the bolt. If it did just collapse what was left of the broken bolt, then I can run just a thread chaser through that hole and save the threads that way. So with the thread chaser, you want to go extremely slow. And if you feel resistance, stop and back off. Back up, just your own sandwich. The thread chaser will try to cut its own threads but it's not actually strong enough to, like a tap is. The hole that I drilled wasn't perfectly centered. Mm. And so I have exposed threads on the top side of this hole. And then I have just a round hole on the bottom side. Uh, the threads that 
were damaged inside that hole were too far damaged to be able to repair. So we're gonna step up our drill bit a couple sizes to drill the hole and tap it. These are all your taps. These are all your dies. So a tap will give you threads into an open hole. A die will give you threads onto a stud to work like a bolt. I own already some square drive sockets. It fits in there a little bit loose, but it lets you use your quarter inch uh, socket and extension on the nut driver. You could use the T-handle style that comes in your tap and die kit. Uh, I just prefer to use ratchet hardware. You wanna use a lot, even more lubrication when you're cutting threads uh, to help the tap cut smooth. Um, if there's no lubrication in there, you'll notice that the tap will kinda jam and bind quite a bit. Uh, so I was able to find a bolt uh, on a freshly tapped hole. It should be able to go in pretty much by hand, which this one does. And so I will just snug it down with a quarter inch driver. And that new bolt does tighten in there. So that bolt isn't the greatest, nicest looking bolt, but we've repaired the hole on this side well enough to be able to tighten a new bolt on there. On the passenger side the same bolt broke and I had drilled it out to I think I got an eighth inch drill bit in there and then this is a side where the the very tip of the easy out actually broke off inside the the tool. <clears throat> oh there. So I, I got it loose, so I'll show you this here now. So I was able to release the tension on the easy out and twist it to remove it from the hole. So if you look on the easy out here, it tightens as you remove the broken bolt. So what you're trying to do is loosen the broken bolt out of the hole. And so the easy out is designed to grab tighter as you twist in that in that counterclockwise rotation to remove a bolt so what had happened was the tool broke as i was trying to remove it so to get the easy out out of the broken hole you just need to rotate it in the opposite direction and it releases its hold so i was able to get this out with a pair of vice grips uh, because it's hardened steel the vice grips were just slipping I really had to over tighten them to clamp on to the easy out to get the broken tool out of that hole. But now we can drill out that hole to a workable size with the M6 by one tap and see if we can retain the original thread hole on this side, unlike the other side. Okay, so that think is enough. We'll try a replacement bolt. So I think we're in luck. So this side we we're able to repair the threads of the original size M6 by one. Uh, the other side we did have to step up that that thread pitch to the 8 by 1.25. That's pretty much how you repair a broken bolt when the nut is hidden and you have no access. Next on the list, what we've got is a NRG aftermarket steering wheel setup, NRG short hub adapter. So this will adapt to the vehicle steering column. This is vehicle specific. You need to order this for your car. It's a six bolt pattern that matches most aftermarket steering wheels. Uh, you could just bolt your aftermarket steering wheel direct to the short hub adapter. We've opted to get a uh, 
energy quick release. This one is neochrome. It has two components. The quick release that mounts to your steering wheel and then the other adapter that mounts to your vehicle's steering column adapter. And it will engage with the ball bearings on here and will index by those four bearings at the bottom and then those six ball bearings at the top with a gap in between so that this will only interact with that component in one direction. So I picked up this wheel really cheap uh, from a friend. It was only 20 bucks. It didn't come with any hardware. So in order to utilize it, uh, I picked up an energy horn button. Actually, I like the styling of this horn button. It did come with the mounting hardware for the steering wheel that I did not have. That'll help at least just get the steering wheel mounted and determine what type of dish we need before we order the wheel. There's three 10 millimeter bolts that are mounted behind the factory horn button. So we'll pull those 10 mil bolts off, get the horn button off, and then there's one big nut underneath the wheel. At the back of each of the, uh, I guess, trees coming off the steering wheel, there's a 10 millimeter nut on the back. Short socket with a quarter inch. Once you've got the last of the three 10 millimeter bolts out, then you've got one 21 millimeter nut that holds the steering wheel to the steering column. This can be extremely tight and it's a nylon locking nut. So you need to hold the wheel really tightly to be able to get this nut to crack loose if you are not using an impact wrench or gun. <clears throat> Mine came off fairly easily. If you have what's called a steering wheel puller, you can use that puller to push the steering wheel off the center steering column. A lot easier way is just grab onto the wheel. Once you've knocked it around a bit, put the nut back on so that you don't end up pulling this wheel right into your face or your chest or something. Uh, very common to have that happen. If you put the nut back on, you'll only pull it as far as the nut. So. There. Steering wheel's loose. Pull the nut back off and the steering wheel slides off nicely. You wanna make sure that the steering wheel is straight when you take it off so that when you put your energy hub on it also is straight there's a couple functions and things happening underneath your steering wheel here uh, these white plastic tabs are to disengage your turn signal after you've made a complete turn so you want to make sure that those line up to your energy hub as well as down here there's a spring or a sprung electrical connection and that is the contact for your horn. So you need to make sure that, that those two items will function underneath your energy short hub. If you want the add lettering visible, you can install it with the energy writing up or 180 degrees with the energy writing pointing down. I'll do mine with the lettering up because we have other energy components that we're installing. But the big thing that you need to focus on is that the two holes that are in the back of the adapter mate up with the two plastic tabs for your turn signal disengage and that your horn contact will touch the uh, clock spring contact point on the back of the adapter. You need to reuse your original nut. It is also specific to your vehicle and will not come with any adapter that you buy. So don't destroy your steering column nut. Put everything together hand tight and then just snug it down with your ratchet. <clears throat> you wanna make sure that the plastic tabs are engaged into the back of the adapter, which I can see ours are. I can also see that our horn 
contact isn't actually touching the back of the energy adapter. That means we can continue and put everything together, but the horn definitely will not function. What we can do now is actually mount the steering wheel to the quick release and then the horn button will bolt down over top. You want to line up, there's two bolt patterns on the quick release and they're both for a six bolt wheel. It just depends on what style the hub is on your particular wheel. You want to take note that your release button and the energy branding will point up if you've mounted your uh, short hub adapter and the recipient piece of the quick release it mounted in that same orientation. So you want to line up your bolt patterns on the front face of the wheel here so you can see that the bolt pattern all lines up. Set that down. I'm not going to connect any of the wiring for the horn yet. Like I said before, this isn't the wheel that we're going to use permanently on the car. This was just a cheap wheel that I got off a friend to figure out what seating position is going to be best for the driver. So you want to work in kind of a crisscross pattern for tightening the uh, tapered bolts down. That way you know you get a even mating surface in between the quick release adapter and the horn button plate. Uh, that way when you're actually turning the wheel, it won't feel like it's bent or, or offset. Uh, also, tighten these bolts down pretty tight. You don't want your steering wheel coming loose, obviously, in the middle of while you're driving. Uh, when I do a final assembly with the final wheel, uh, I will put a little bit of uh, thread locker on these bolts so that I know they're not just going to rattle loose. So there we go. Grab all the hardware that you need and your adapter and get this installed on the car. It just actually goes together real easy. Orientation of your adapter needs to have those six ball bearings pointing up. So right in the middle of those six, three ball bearings on either side is pointing right up at our white dot and our energy badging. Start all your bolts, tighten them down in a crisscross pattern so that you know you're getting a good seat up against the adapter. Pull the release coupler towards you, push down the lock button, engage the wheel, release, and everything is tight. That's it. So the turn signal and wiper arms are a little bit further away than they were previously with the stock wheel, but uh, as far as a, a driver position goes, uh, I like the size of this wheel and the, the seating position of where it sits. If I was to mount a deep dish or a deep corn wheel on here, most of them are about a three inch dish. So what that means is the wheel sits three inches closer to the driver from where the mating surface is. So because we've installed a quick release, I need a zero dish wheel. So what that means is that the mounting surface is almost at the same plane as the wheel. on our list we've got a set of LED uh, projector headlights that we're gonna install in the car just get rid of the old halogen style first you got to take off your plastic housing shields they're just held on with four Phillips head screws two on either side
headlight housing should pop off. There's a lens retainer plate that holds the whole headlight assembly in there. So you don't want to remove the adjusting screws yet. You just want to take off or loosen the two, actually there's three, sorry, screws just for the, the bezel. And of course, like everything on this car, seems to be rusty and stripped. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove these top two all the way. What I'm gonna try to do is just cheat a little bit here and bend the bezel plate down and sneak the bulb out without removing that bottom screw. So just disconnect your wiring in the back and the bulb comes out as one complete assembly. Uh, these headlights have a couple additional features other than just being a headlight. Uh, you can wire in the halo and you can wire in also signal indicators. Uh, for now, we're not going to bother wiring all those in. Uh, we just want to get the headlights in and make sure that they at least function. Um, and they are conversion bulbs. So they have the same wiring plug on the back here as what the original bulb assembly had. This one just gives us the uh, addition of the like projector with the halo. So uh, that should just drop right in to that original housing and it will be held on by the original bezel. So uh, peel the plastic off, get this installed and we'll see how it looks. I'm okay with installing some cheap headlights off of Wish to just get the look that we're looking for. Uh, if they fail quickly, uh, we will get some nicer style headlights like this, probably from uh, like a known company like Rigid does some really nice LED headlight assemblies. But for now, we'll go with these ones. Oh, that's probably a nice scratch all the way over here. So you want to just seat the bulb into the bezel, connect your wiring in the back, tuck it all out of the way, and then maneuver the assembly in place. There's a couple lugs cast into the glass here, and those lugs will actually orient whether your bulb sits in whichever direction. 